Welcome to Geometry and your first flipped lesson. We are going to be starting with Chapter 1, Lesson 1, which is on points, lines, and planes. Our objectives and reasoning. What are we learning? We are learning to identify and model points, lines, and planes, and we are learning to identify intersecting lines and planes. Why do we need to learn this material? Well, let's think for a minute that we are looking at a subway map. The locations of stops are represented by points on the map, and the route the train can take is modeled by a series of connecting paths that look like lines. You can also think of the tracks that they're on. The flat surface of the map on which these points and lines lie is representative of a plane. So this is one real world example where we would use points, lines, and planes. Our first vocabulary term that you should be writing down in your notebook for future reference is undefined terms. Undefined terms are the basic terms of geometry that are only explained and defined using examples and descriptions. So what does that mean? One example are points, lines, and planes. A point is something that if I asked you to draw on a paper, you could draw a point, but you can't define it. A point is a location and it has neither shape nor size. Now we commonly make it a point, a dot, a circle on a paper, but that's an idea of a point. It's not an actual point that can be measured. So we define it by using a picture and a common definition rather than having an actual definition of a point. A point is named by a capital letter. So for example, point A would be representative of this turquoise point right here, which I am giving size, and a capital A. Points are always named with a capital letter. There is no shortcut, you would just have to write out the word point. Here is your first example. Talked about in the why are we learning this, a geometric shape modeled by a colored dot on a map would be considered a point, so therefore your correct answer is A. Another vocabulary term that we are going to be talking about is a line. Now again, if I asked you to draw a line in your notebook, you could all draw a line. If I asked you for an example of a line, you could give me an example of a line. A line is made up of an infinite number of points. It has no beginning and no end, which is why we have these arrows on either side. It also has no thickness or width. Now I can draw a thick line and I can draw a thin line, but technically I cannot measure them. Again, that's what makes it an undefined term because I can only define it by drawing a picture. There is exactly one line through any two points. So any two points that I have can be connected to form a line. Lines are named by the letters that represent those two points. So this would be line P, Q, or by a lowercase script letter or cursive letter that is at the end of a line. In this case, we can name this line as line M, or line P, Q, which tells us we are starting at P and moving to Q. And please notice that there is a line with an arrow on either end to show that it continues on or line QP with a line above it with an arrow. When I use a lowercase script letter, I do not need to put a segment. What I would need to add is the word line. Hopefully this is review. However, I want to make sure that we are all on the same page. That is why I am reviewing these terms. Please make sure that you are copying the definitions into your notebooks. Here is another example. It says that I am to use the figure to name a line containing the point X. The very first thing I want to do when it asks me to find point X is I want to find point X. Every time you are in geometry and you are given a diagram, use it. Line X as a capital letter. Well, I cannot have line X as a capital letter. I need two letters when I am using capital letters. Line C, that's a lowercase script letter, well, that is right here, and X is definitely on that line, so B is a possibility. Line Z is my next choice. Well, Z is all the way over here. It's not connected to X, so it's not going to be C. 
and line YZ looks like it would be written correctly, but Y and Z are not connected, therefore that is not an option, and my initial reaction of point B is correct. Another vocabulary term is the term collinear. Co meaning together and linear meaning line. Collinear literally means points that lie on the same line. Here we see a picture that has three points that are on the same line. All three points are collinear, but I would only use two of them to name the line. Non-collinear would mean not collinear or not on the same line. Points that do not lie on the same line. Here I have three points. I can connect any two of them to make one line, but I cannot connect the three points to make a straight line. I would end up with three separate lines. Here is another example. It's asking me to name three points that are collinear, so I am looking for on the same line. B, O, and X are not on the same line. I cannot draw a straight line through them, so it is not A. X, O, and N, which is down here, again, I cannot draw a straight line, so it is not going to be B. R, O, and B, well, here's R, here's O, and here's B. Please notice as I am going through this problem that I am finding the points and labeling them. Geometry is a very visual subject and it helps to use the pictures that you are given. So it is not going to be C, which leaves me D. A, X, and Z. Well, here is A, here is X, and here is Z. I can draw a line, even though it is a little bit sloppy, and I can connect them. So therefore, my correct answer is D. A plane is a flat surface made up of points that extend infinitely in all directions. There is exactly one plane through any three points that are not on the same line. So B, C, and D create a plane because they are not collinear. I can name it by a capital script letter in the corner, so in this example it would be plane K, or I can pick the three letters that are here and arrange them in any order. The most common order would be alphabetical if I can do that, so it would be B, C, D. However, any of these other combinations would work to name this plane. Which leads us to the term coplanar. Co meaning together, planar meaning on the same plane. Points that lie on the same plane are coplanar. So points B, C, and D are coplanar. Non-coplanar are points that do not lie on the same plane. So here we have added X and Y that are not on this blue plane. While they are on the computer screen, they are not on this blue plane here, so therefore they are not coplanar. D and B are coplanar, but X is not. So therefore they are non-coplanar because X is the rule breaker. C, Y, and X are not on the same plane at all, so they are not on coplanar. Here is an example. R points X, O, and R coplanar. So here is X, here is O, here is R. X, O, and R are completely contained by the blue plane T, or plane T. They are completely contained by that, so the answer is yes. How else can you classify points X, O, and R? X, O, and R are all on the same line, therefore they are also collinear. How many planes appear in this figure? One plane would be this top plane, A, B, R, because planes are named by three letters. So even though we have O and X, we don't need those. Here is one plane, and then we have plane T that it intersects, therefore there are two planes. Our final vocabulary term is intersection. An intersection is the set of points that two or more geometric figures have in common. If you think about an intersection when you're driving, two streets meet, there's usually a light or a stop sign. Two lines intersect at a point always every time. 
you need to make sure that you memorize this fact. Two planes intersect at a line, the red plane and the purple plane. They intersect at a line right here. Planes and lines can intersect at a point or a line. It depends on the picture. Here, we have two planes, plane M and plane N, intersecting at line L. However, line H can cut through plane N and intersect at a point. It really depends on the picture. The more planes and lines that intersect, the more possibilities that are created. If you look at this Rubik's Cube, I have three planes, the yellow plane, the blue plane, and the red plane that can intersect at a point. However, the blue plane and the red plane intersect at a line. The yellow plane and the blue plane intersect at a line. But here are three planes that intersect at a line. It really depends on the pictures, which is why I suggest that you get colored pencils to be able to trace the worksheets when you get them. Here is our final example. At what point do BN and XO intersect? The first thing you want to do is trace BN. So here is point B and here is point N. So here is line BN and I'm tracing it so that I can visually find it. XO is right here. And even though it says XO, it is the entire line, so you keep connecting. And as you can see, the point where they intersect is right here, which is point R, which is letter C, is my final answer. Definitions and defined terms. These are explained using undefined terms and or other defined terms. So for example, a space is defined as a boundless three-dimensional set of all points and it can contain lines and planes. That concludes the first set of notes for chapter one, section one. Please make sure that you bring any questions that you have to class and be prepared to complete assignments with your table partners.